In a shocking twist, NASA is reportedly reconsidering its partnership with SpaceX's Starship for the Artemis moon missions, and Elon Musk is furious. After years of development, billions in funding, and multiple test flights proving Starship's potential, NASA is now looking at replacing SpaceX's lunar lander with another alternative. But why would NASA walk away from the most advanced rocket system ever built? Is it politics, safety concerns, or hidden pressure from traditional contractors? Today, we'll uncover NASA's controversial plan to replace Starship, what it means for the Artemis program, and how Elon Musk is fighting back to keep humanity's moon dream alive. So things really kicked off this week when NASA's acting administrator, Sean Duffy, made some television appearances, and this is what he had to say. Acting Chief Sean Duffy, who also serves as U.S. Transportation Secretary who told Fox News. Fox and Friends program. They get interviews with the guy he won't even give me a statement. Duffy's comments follow months of mounting pressure within NASA to speed up its Artemis lunar program and push SpaceX to make greater progress on its Starship lunar lander. While China progresses towards its own goal of sending humans to the moon by 2030. It represents a major shift in NASA's lunar strategy, starting a new competitive juncture in the program for a crewed moon lander just two years before the scheduled landing date. We've been working for the last year with three partners who will help us achieve the next human mission to the moon because we know that this first step to the moon will then lead us to go to Mars. And we know that the human landing system is one of the first steps to get us there. And so we've been working with Dynetics, a Lido's company. We've been working with Blue Origin who have partners of Draper, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. In addition, we've also been working with SpaceX. Blue Origin is widely expected to compete for the mission, while Lockheed Martin has indicated that it would convene an industry team to heed NASA's call. The positions of SpaceX and Starship within NASA's Artemis program are now facing a serious challenge following a surprising new statement from NASA. Starship, picked by NASA in 2021 under a contract now $4.4 billion, faces a 2027 moon landing deadline that agency advisors estimate could slip years behind schedule, citing competing priorities. Musk sees Starship as crucial to launching larger batches of Starlink satellites to space, and eventually ferrying humans to Mars among other missions. Almost immediately after the announcement, Musk issued his response. So what exactly happened and how did Musk react? Elon also goes on to say no, China is not going to beat us. They're not going to be first. SpaceX is moving at lightning speed compared to the rest of the industry. He says moreover, mark my words, Starship will do the entire moon mission. It's hard to believe, but NASA still doesn't have an official administrator. And it's been a pretty tumultuous 2025. And things are heating up as there's a power struggle ensuing over who will lead NASA. We're really excited to bring you the announcement of who NASA is going to continue to finish out the human landing system and take humans back to the moon. We are now less than two years away from Artemis 3, the highly anticipated mission scheduled for 2027 that will return humans to the lunar surface for the first time in more than 50 years. This mission holds immense significance not only because of the symbolic return to the moon, but also because it could determine which nation will lead the new space race of the 21st century. SpaceX and its Starship HLS have been officially assigned to carry out this historic task. However, that arrangement may now be in jeopardy following a surprising new statement from NASA itself. The very agency that awarded SpaceX the contract several years ago Recently, NASA's acting administrator Sean Duffy made headlines after announcing a major shift in the agency's approach to the Artemis program. He stated that NASA would open the development of the HLS to new competition. On X, Duffy wrote, We are in a race against China, so we need the best companies to operate at a speed that gets us to the moon first. SpaceX has the contract to build the HLS, which will get U.S. astronauts there on Artemis 3 but competition and innovation are the keys to our dominance in space. So NASA is opening up HLS production to Blue Origin and other great American companies. In another post, Duffy added, a little competition does not hurt and it spurs innovation. American companies will now be able to compete to see which one can get us back to the moon first. They are going to be China there and we are going to do it under the leadership of the president. 
From Duffy's statements, it's clear that NASA is placing tremendous emphasis on the goal of being the first to return to the moon, primarily in the context of its rivalry with China's rapidly advancing lunar program. Within that competitive framework, NASA seems to believe that SpaceX's progress on Starship has not been as fast as they had hoped. We're going to have a space race in regard to American companies competing to see who can actually get us back to the moon first. But I feel pretty confident with this competition. We're going to beat the Chinese and do it in President Trump's term before 2029. And so Sean Duffy wrote on X, we are in a race against China. So we need the best companies to operate at a speed that gets us to the moon first. SpaceX has the contract to build the HLS, which will get us astronauts there on Artemis 3. But competition and innovation are the keys to our dominance in space. So NASA is opening up HLS, production to Blue, Origin and other great American companies. So veteran space reporter Eric Berger says that. In here, Duffy also indirectly acknowledged that NASA's projected target of a 2027 crewed lunar landing is no longer achievable, which is a pretty big deal. And it doesn't sound like the way he worded it that this is a maybe Sean Duffy says he's in the process of opening that contract up. Now, as Eric Berger points out, Sean Duffy is correct in saying that SpaceX still has several milestones to meet before they're able to actually have HLS do what it needs to do with that moon. Mission. For example, one of the technical hurdles that we still have yet to see is refueling the vehicles in low Earth orbit, something that's never been done before on a large scale. So who would be the players getting involved if NASA does open this back up and more than SpaceX companies are involved? Well, Blue Origin already has a contract with NASA for a ready-to-go lunar lander. That will be developed in the 2030s. But Eric Berger thinks that what Sean Duffy is referring to as a plan developed by Blue Origin that uses multiple one Malawi and Kwacha landers, a smaller vehicle originally designed for cargo only. And this plan would apparently not require in-space refueling in the one Malawi and Kwacha vehicle is nearing its debut flight early next year. Rather than removing SpaceX from the program entirely, NASA is introducing competition to create motivation and drive innovation across the industry. Blue Origin appears to be the primary beneficiary of this policy shift, as the company continues developing its Blue Moon Mark I and II landers. Naturally, SpaceX and Musk did not stay silent following these remarks. Musk, known for his bold and unfiltered responses, quickly pushed back. He stated, they won't. SpaceX is moving like lightning compared to the rest of the space industry. Moreover, Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission, mark my words. When asked about competitors like Blue Origin, Musk was characteristically blunt. He remarked, Blue Origin has never delivered a payload to orbit let alone the moon. Beyond the immediate rivalry, Musk emphasized a long-term vision that distinguishes SpaceX from traditional lunar lander programs. He stated, a permanently crewed lunar science base would be far more impressive than a repeat of what was already done incredibly well by Apollo in 1969. This reflects his broader philosophy. Success on the moon should not merely be about who arrives first, but about who stays in. Build something sustainable. Musk has consistently argued that true victory for the U.S. will come from establishing a permanent presence on the lunar surface, meaning it as a springboard for future exploration and colonization. However, it is also true that arriving first carries significant strategic advantages. Being first would allow NASA and SpaceX to claim the most favorable locales for future bases and to set key precedents in lunar exploration and resource utilization. Starship's massive capacity offers clear advantages in that regard. Its ability to transport larger crews, heavier payloads, and essential equipment could accelerate the construction of a lunar base. Moreover, Starship could itself be converted into part of that base, minimizing cost and maximizing efficiency. While Musk's comments are confident, actions will ultimately speak louder than words. For SpaceX to prove NASA's concerns unfounded, the company will need to demonstrate rapid and consistent progress in the coming year. This means accelerating Starship's flight schedule, achieving orbital refueling tests, 
making safe and repeatable landings, and preparing the HLS variant for full-scale lunar operations. The next year, therefore, will be a decisive one for SpaceX. If they can deliver on these technical goals, the company could reaffirm its leadership in human spaceflight and solidify its role as NASA's key partner in the Artemis program. But if delays continue, NASA's decision to introduce competition could reshape the balance of power in the American space industry. Now, of course, others might be able to get involved as well. But like Elon Musk, who runs SpaceX, is not having any of this. He even went as far to say that Starship would end up doing the whole moon mission. He's now referencing Sean Duffy as Sean Dummy saying Sean Dummy is trying to kill NASA. And here he says again, Sean Dummy. He even wrote this poll saying, should someone whose biggest claim to fame is climbing trees be running America's space program? Which I would say I feel like Sean Duffy is actually far more known as a reality TV star than his tree climbing, but regardless. And so not only may this contract be opened back up, but as I mentioned earlier, Eric Berger reported. The Wall Street Journal confirms what he's heard about Sean Duffy pushing for NASA to fold into the Department of Transportation. And he's currently meeting with senators on this idea for him. It would be a win-win. He gets to take credit for NASA's success, but doesn't have to run the agency, which people are saying in the comments, doesn't this basically mean the end of NASA? Eric says it means the end of its independence. And a lot of people are saying, oh hell no. Eric also wrote based on a lot of reporting over the last two days, one thing seems clear. Jared Isaac Mann was on a good path to being re-nominated to lead NASA. Sean Duffy and his chief of staff Pete Meacham have increased their lobbying to stop that Trump will decide what happens next. NASA's decision to move away from SpaceX's Starship could change the future of lunar exploration forever. But if there's one thing we know about Elon Musk and SpaceX, they don't back down easily. Whether NASA sticks with Starship or not, SpaceX will keep pushing toward the moon, Mars, and beyond. The question now is, will politics stop progress, or will Starship prove unstoppable once again? If you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, because this story is far from over, and we'll be here to cover every twist and breakthrough as it unfolds. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.